One of the best arenas to play basketball in the entire NBA has to be Madison Square Garden. Now, I may be a little bit biased being a New York Knicks fan, but there's a lot of players around the league that actually consider MSG to be the mecca of basketball. A lot of NBA players, NBA greats, had some of their best games at MSG. But according to a recent poll that was conducted, opposing NBA fans actually stated that they feel least comfortable visiting MSG. We're going to look into that report. We're also going to look at what Jalen Brunson said as he received a flopping fine recently and he spoke out and addressed how he felt about this new rule change. We're going to speak about all of this and so much more today. So be sure you're subscribed to the channel and have notifications turned on so you don't miss a second of the new content. And now, let's get started. The NBA fans apparently do not like going to Madison Square Garden. I'm not going to lie, guys. When I read this, I was a little bit shocked and hurt because I love MSG. A lot of players around the league love MSG. A lot of players around the league love playing at MSG. So to hear that opposing fans do not like coming to MSG or feel least comfortable visiting MSG, it really didn't make sense to me. Take a look at this report here. Shout out to New York Basketball on the app X that's basically reported the following. The area around MSG has had one of the lowest crime rates in the NBA. That's number one. But according to a rank and a survey that just came out asking fans, which arena would you not feel comfortable visiting as an opposing fan? MSG actually ranked first. As you can clearly see on the graphic here, MSG is number one, followed by the Pistons Little Caesars Arena at two, TD Garden at three, Wells Fargo Arena for the 76ers as four, and then Barclays Center for the Brooklyn Nets at five. I'm from New York. I grew up in New York. Obviously grew up a New York Knicks fan. Been at MSG a number of times. Always had a great time. Every time I go there, I feel like I meet new friends and always interact with the fans that know the game so well. It's always a great time and a great experience. So I never have a bad time. There's obviously some fans there that are obnoxious, maybe drink a little bit too much, and don't always have the spirit after a win or a loss that you're looking for. Clearly that's the case. But honestly, isn't that the case at any arena? Not only MSG. For the most part, I feel like MSG is a great place and a great environment for basketball. But after hearing this report... It was a little bit alarming and shocking to me because like New York basketball stated, the MSG area in terms of crime rate is one of the lowest in the NBA. So in terms of crime, there's not a lot that happens there. So to see that a lot of NBA fans or opposing NBA fans that come to the garden don't feel comfortable coming to the garden. It really was a head scratcher for me because I didn't understand why. Is it other fans is it the other fans that maybe make you feel that you're not comfortable or not wanted there? I'm just trying to understand what the feeling is. And if you're another NBA fan watching this video right now, leave a comment below and let me know. Do you feel uncomfortable when you go to MSG? Do you not like something when you go to MSG? What is it about Madison Square Garden that makes you feel uncomfortable? Because everybody that I've spoken to, everybody that I've hung out with, Everybody seems to have a very good experience and a very good moment or memory from Madison Square Garden. I've never heard somebody complain or give me a lot of complaints anyways about MSG. All I can say is let's rerun this poll with a bigger audience and see what the results are because I honestly believe it would be different than what this result is showing here. But I love MSG. I love the New York Knicks. I love the Garden. So I can't hate on one of my favorite arenas in the entire league. I hope we can rerun this poll with a bigger audience because I think the results would be a little bit different. Jalen Brunson has received a flopping fine. Now, if you haven't been watching the games closely, there's a new rule in effect that's a flopping fine. If you're a player and you're taking contact and it looks like you're acting out the contact way too much, the refs are going to see that. They're going to call a technical foul on it and then the opposing team is going to get a free throw. If they miss it though, and they catch it after the fact, they'll fine you. 
And that's exactly what happened to Jalen Brunson. Shout out to the New York Post for reporting the following. The team's starting point guard, Jalen Brunson, was fined $2,000 by the league for a non-called violation in Friday's win at Atlanta. Brunson also received a technical foul during Saturday's loss in New Orleans for arguing that he similarly landed on the foot of Pelicans forward Brandon Ingram. And when he sold the contact during that, he got hit with another technical foul and the Pelicans were able to shoot that shot. Now this rule, obviously because it's new, is going to be called a little bit up and down early. Sometimes they're going to get it right, sometimes they're going to get it wrong, and sometimes they're going to get it really, really wrong. Now every time Brunson has been hit with this, he's basically argued that he's hitting somebody's foot and as he's landing, he's landing in a way to protect himself But not only that, he's landing in a way to make sure they understand that he stepped on somebody's foot and they have to make that call. So he's not trying to be outrageous. He's just trying to make sure the refs understand that that's a call they need to make. And he more or less said the same when he was asked about it. This is what Brunson had to say about him stepping on opposing players' feet and the refs not seeing it. They didn't call it. So yeah, I guess they're not calling it. It is what it is at this point. I don't know. I know game one, Tatum's foot was under mine. The second time in Atlanta, I landed on one foot, tried to catch my balance, and fell. I mean, Saturday night, it wasn't called. No one's ever going to be perfect. Just got to go out there and continue to play. Of course, I would expect that answer from a leader in Jalen Brunson. Basically saying, they didn't call it, they should have called it, but it is what it is. It's not going to change the fact at this point All I can do is continue to move forward and get better with my game. I can't worry about what they called or what they're telling me that they missed or whatever the case may be because it doesn't matter now. It's not going to help me win those games or get those losses and turn them into W's. So that's why Brunson is just locked in and focused on the next game against Cleveland. I wouldn't expect anything less from our leader in Jalen Brunson. He's not going to blame the refs for the losses. He's going to say what he's going to say. He was honest about his answer. And honestly, I would have said the exact same thing too. If you looked at the plays, he is clearly landing on players' feet. And that's why he's falling to the ground. And he's falling in a way to protect himself from injury so he doesn't hurt himself further because he just stepped on somebody's foot. But they're missing it. They're not calling it and they're getting either fine for it. So he's getting a fine for it, number one. Or if he's not getting a fine for it, the other team is making that free throw. Either way, he's losing that battle on it. But he's saying this in an effort for them to hear him. So that way they see it, they review it, and they can call it better moving forward. Early on, like I said, there are going to be some mistakes. But as we move forward, hopefully, listen to what I'm saying. Hopefully, as we move forward here, the refs can get better at this and they'll call it a little bit better and Jalen won't get hit with these technical fouls or fines because honestly, I don't think he deserved any of the ones that he got. He was clearly making contact with another player's foot. I don't know how you missed that three straight times. Either way, I hope they get better with it. Shout out to Jalen Brunson for taking this on the chin, being a leader with his response, and moving forward and looking at the task ahead. The task ahead being the Cleveland Cavaliers. I can't wait to see what the New York Knicks do against the Cavs. It's going to be a great game, and I hope the New York Knicks come out on top. But let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Do you agree with this flopping fine that was charged against Jalen Brunson? Or do you think they still need time in order to call it right? Let me know in the comments below because honestly, guys, I would love to hear from you. But that's going to do it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, go ahead and smash that like button. Leave a comment below. And of course, guys, please subscribe to the channel. Until next time, Nick fans. Peace.